Once upon a time in a convenience store, a woman asked, "Which zero calorie drink will I like more?" The cashier said, "I have a thought. Coke Zero Sugar always hits the spot." The taste made her heart fill with laughter, and with her Coke Zero Sugar, she lived happily ever after. Coca Cola Zero Sugar, unbelievably delicious. No trip to the store is complete without the unbelievably delicious zero calorie taste of Coke Zero Sugar. Pick some up at 7-Eleven today. Baseball handicapping 2016 brought to you by OffshoreInsiders.com. Wanted to take a look at the standings from a better standpoint. Who have been the best teams to bet on and who have been the best teams to bet against or the worst teams to bet on, depending on which way you want to look at it. But the uh, the ROI, the units won and units lost is based on actually betting on them. Top five teams as of May 25th, 2016. Texas, six games above 500, but 106 units in the plus column and the Phillies are more typical of what it has been over the history where you really got to isolate the surprise team to make money as opposed to betting on you know those big favorites but the last two years have quite frankly been the greatest era of big favorites winning and we're going to address that in a moment and that's why you see a little bit more of a correlation between teams with the best straight up records and teams with the most units won Baltimore third best team at 26 and 17, but they've made 8.42 units. Boston 28 and 17 plus 8 units. And uh, San Francisco is in fifth place plus 7.8 units. But still, the Dodgers are a little more typical of what we've seen historically. Despite being over 500, they have the sixth worst record as far as we are concerned anyway. Uh, six worse as far as units one is they are minus 7.25 units this year. Meanwhile, the bottom teams, Minnesota has just been awful, 12 and 34, already minus 20.8 units. Uh, Houston, Cincinnati, Atlanta, and Toronto. But you can see even the Atlanta Braves, as bad as they've been, they're still not quite as bad as Houston. And again, Houston, another team much more typical of what has happened historically. And this is a golden rule that you want to apply in every single solitary sport. What teams are usually the biggest overachieving teams? The teams that underachieved the previous year. And what teams are the biggest underachieving teams? The teams that overachieved the, the previous year. Houston, last year they snuck up on teams, but now they were a team you know, that had the burden of high expectations. And this is not uncommon at all in any sport. Uh, and truthfully, if you did ask me before the year started who would probably finish the year uh, with the worst units won or the best team to bet against, and I would have said Houston, but in defense of uh, that or, you know, without trying to brag too much, in reality, we always handicap on a day-by-day -day basis. That's why I'm not a big fan of, of futures bets because you don't want to kind of get stuck in a certain prejudices etc. But Houston, pretty typical of what happens in a lot of sports. They were the Cinderella team last year, and of course they become the team to bet against this year. Now this again, also not really typical historically. The best pitchers, the most profitable pitchers this year have actually been stud pitchers. But then again, notice they've got to go undefeated in the case of Strasburg and Arietta in order to be a big profit pitchers. And look, you know, Strasburg and Arietta, they're stud pitchers, but they're going to lay bigger and bigger numbers. And yeah, I'm going to go a little bit out on a limit again. Again, I don't really do my handicapping based on making generic statements and projecting how a, a team or a pitcher is going to do for the rest of the year. But Strasburg and Arietta wouldn't shock me if they're pretty good to go against at this point because they're going to have to be laying such a humongous number. And just to maintain it, they're going to have to hit, you know, they're going to have to win 70 to 80 percent of their starts. Josh Tomlin up there. Johnny Cueto, again, another guy who not a big surprise, of course, when he, he was first traded over to the American League. He struggled a little bit, as a lot of pitchers do, but Cueto has certainly found his niche. And again, Chris Sale. So really some of the top pitchers in baseball and in previous years when you look at the most profitable pitchers to bet on they're usually like number two three and four starters who have gotten a lot of run support who have been more of a surprise and that's why stevie vincent that widely accepted as a top pitching expert in baseball and uh, this year he's been even better because a lot of the pitching has gone the form and nobody evaluates pitchers like he does at offshoreinsiders.com meanwhile the least profitable pitchers uh, or from our standpoint, the best pitchers to bet against, although those units are actually to bet with, 
not necessarily betting against a little bit less, you know, if you're betting the juice. But Matt Harvey, again, a little bit more typical of what we've seen historically, a stud pitcher who's been a disappointment rather than, you know, a guy like Phil Hughes, a so-so pitcher on just an absolutely awful team. But again, if you're flat out asking me, I would not be all that shocked if Phil Hughes from this point on uh, could be in the plus column. A guy like Arietta could be in the minus column. But again, we, we consider so many other things. So it's not like I'm literally going to put my money where my mouth is on that for the uh, rest of the year. But, you know, kind of one of those little fun bets if you want to bet with a fellow gambling friend or that. You know, and, and you might even be able to get, you know, like plus one stick 60 on that proposition. But they have been the uh, best pitchers to bet against. Phil Hughes, Matt Harvey, Kendall Graveman, R.A. Dickey. And again, Dickey, these um, knuckleball pitchers, they always tend to be very, very streaky. Irvin Santana, a guy who just uh, will not go away. But here is really maybe the most compelling thing. You know, just earlier today, I was on a Skype call with a guy by the name of Oscar Dooley, kind of, you know, a so so nice guy, but a so so journeyman handicapper. And he was lamenting because he's, you know, a guy that, as kind of in his own words, he picks underdogs for underdogs' sake. And he, you know, he just likes to pick underdogs. So he can say that, that he did. And he was lamenting how many big favorites have been covering this year or been winning this year, I should say. And, and he is actually right. If you bet every 130 or larger favorite this year through May the 25th, you're already up 39.7 units. Now, make sure you uh, listen to this whole podcast or watch this whole video as they are simulcast, but certainly if you're watching the video, you can see the graphics right there. Through 2000, or 2016 so far, plus 39.7 units. Last year was plus 37.5 units, but generally... When you're betting on big favorites, that's not really the way to go. 2014, you uh, lost a little bit of money. 2013, you lost a little. 2012, more like it, you lost 22.7 units, although 2011 did turn a profit, and as it turns out, I guess that was kind of a precursor of some things to come. 2010, uh, you know, you lost 67.7 units, and very much historically, you know, frankly, when I first gained my prowess, um... One big underdogs, big go against 2009, lost 25 units. And there you can see 2004, lost 122 units. 2005, minus 74 units. Um, 2006, minus you know, 90 units. G historically, big favorites have been huge go against. And the last two years have been just the opposite. So those chalk betters have uh, really, really had some success the last two years. Now, here's some cumulative betting. If you bet on every single 130 favorite from the 2005 season to the 2010 season, you would be minus 485.1 units. Now, that's not to say that going against them, you would have won money because of the juice. The odds makers would have won either way, the bookmakers, but you'd only be down 136.5 units if you bet against every 130 favorite. But, you know, and, and more specifically, in longer term, 2005 to 2014, you would have lost 497 units. But again, compare that, the last two years you would have won 77.2 units. Now here, is that an aberration or is there something to interpret from that? You could definitely say in the post-steroid era that the pitching, it's returned to uh, pitching. But you know when you go back historically, even the pre-steroid era, or at least what we assume is the pre-steroid era, still uh, as a general rule of thumb, betting on underdogs was a good play. I don't think this will continue, and it's it's a pretty simple reason why. And that is, look, the odds makers, they know that the public prefers to bet underdogs, or prefers to bet favorites, I should say. And as if the favorites are winning, the uh, public's going to be winning, and the bookmakers are losing. So I think, it, you know, it, you're going to have to pay an even higher price for betting on these superstars. And where a guy may have been priced, say, 180 you know, the odds makers are going to say you got to lay 200, etc. So at this point, I still think despite what has happened the last two years, can't deny the last two years has been very good for chalks. Still think underdogs over the next uh, five, ten years, and really for the rest of 2016, the last, you know, one and a third season, notwithstanding that the underdogs will very likely come around. But the bottom line is that offshoreinsiders.com we do make our picks not based on 
you know, generic statements and say I'm going to go with this general theory and bet for or against it. Uh, and, oh, I probably should have said this at the beginning. I was saying how Oscar Dooley was lamenting how underdogs are winning. And if you'll notice, getting my picks, I picked a lot more favorites this year. So the computer metrics have been very kind to us, both with underdogs and with favorites. And also those uh, run line plays, especially laying one and a half, it's been a little bit better to do that than in recent years as well. But remember, the best baseball picks are always at OffshoreInsiders.com, www.OffshoreInsiders.com. Once upon a time in a convenience store, a woman asked, which zero-calorie drink will I like more? The cashier said, I have a thought. Coke Zero Sugar always hits the spot. The taste made her heart fill with laughter. And with her Coke Zero Sugar, she lived happily ever after. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Unbelievably delicious. No trip to the store is complete without the unbelievably delicious zero-calorie taste of Coke Zero Sugar. Pick some up at 7-Eleven today.